Again, I'm Billy Thomas. I'm an extension forester here in the Department of Forestry and Natural Resources at UK. And I'm excited to tell you about the 2022 Kentucky Woodland Owner Short Course. This is a program that our whole team is involved with, but many, many others are a big part of it as well. And I'll kind of give you some more information about it as we go on. So your first question may be, what is the Woodland Owner Short Course? Um, and we call it WASC around here, WSC. And, and really what it is, is it's the largest woodland owner educational program that's offered in Kentucky. Um, and it, it has so many partners and, and supporters of it. And I want to kind of just mention a few of those. But one thing that all of these partner organizations share is a dedication in their mission to supporting Kentucky's woodland owners. In Kentucky, the vast majority of our woodlands are privately owned, um, about 78%. And those are um, what they do with those woodlands has big implications. So we want to try to support those woodland owners to make sound conservation decisions about their woodlands. And and help them get the most out of their woodland ownership. Um, we want them to be as healthy and productive as possible. But one of our big partners is the Kentucky Division of Forestry. That's the state agency that's available to come out and meet with woodland owners on a one-on-one -on -one basis, develop management plans for a woodland owner, and get them started in many of the management programs that are available to get the most out of their woodland. So you'll have a chance to meet the Kentucky Division of Forestry at our field tours um, this year. Also an important partner is the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. This is the state agency that has biologists that are available to meet with landowners. They do have a 25 acre minimum, but if you've got 25 acres, they can come out and meet and work with you on trying to in encourage and promote wildlife of, of interest to you and on your property and what's supported in your area. So it's another important organization for woodland owners in the state and you'll be able to meet with them as well. Next, I'd like to introduce the Kentucky Natural Resources Conservation Service. This is a federal agency, but we have a branch here in Kentucky, and they're a key partner when it comes to woodland conservation practices here in the state. Not only do they provide technical guidance and support, but they're also the, the main source of financial assistance to get some of these conservation practices implemented. Um, one of their big programs is the Environmental Quality Incentives Program, um, affectionately known as EQIP, and that program is available to to, and it has many practices available within it um, to support woodland owners. So that's a it's a good opportunity to get some of those costs covered um, when you're trying to manage your woodland. So you'll get a chance to hear from them as well at our field tours. An important group, not a state agency, but a nonprofit organization is the Kentucky Woodland Owners Association. This is a group of woodland owners that work very hard to try to uh, do things that help woodland owners in the state. And they're a big sponsor of the Kentucky Woodland Owners Short Course, but they're also um, a key member as far as um, reaching out and connecting woodland owners. So it's a great opportunity if you're interested in finding like-minded people that care about their woodlands and want to take care of them and have gone through maybe some of the same struggles and challenges um, that other woodland owners have, um, get to know the Kentucky Woodland Owner Association. And if you're a member, I encourage you, if you're not a member, I encourage you to do so, um, especially if you're a woodland owner. It's a great organization and they, they work very hard on behalf of woodland owners here in the state of Kentucky. Next is the Kentucky Tree Farm Program. You may have seen the tree farm program um, or tree farm signs around the state. Um, this is a also a national program, but we have a chapter here in Kentucky. The Kentucky Tree Farm Committee administers the tree farm program in the state. And it's a way to recognize woodland owners that have been managing their property for a while and are doing all that they can to try to enhance that property um, for a wide variety of reasons, whether it's wildlife or timber, water quality or recreational opportunities. They are engaged in working with natural resource professionals and um, they're enrolled in programs and they're doing everything they can to make their woodlands healthy and productive. So uh, big thanks to the Kentucky Tree Farm Program. Um, if, if you're one of those woodland owners that want to aspire and get some recognition um, for the great work that you're doing, that is a great program and it'll gain you access to uh, additional resources. One of the things it does offer is it provides a certification system as well. So there's something if you're interested in that. 
And then next, we have a group um, here in Kentucky, the Kentucky Association of Consulting Foresters. And this is a group of uh, men and women foresters that are private businesses, basically individual businesses that work on behalf of woodland owners. And they, they don't have a vested interest um, with any mills or anything like that. They Their main job has to be working on behalf of their clients, the woodland owners. So they provide a lot of services to woodland owners. Um, one of the key services that they provide that you really can't get elsewhere is helping you navigate the timber sale process. And while the Kentucky Division of Forestry can provide some assistance in that realm, it's really the Kentucky Association of Consulting Foresters that are key players that can help you navigate that timber sale process and really take a lot of that burden off of the woodland owner. They also play a really important role when it comes to timber trespass or timber damages, trying to assess those, and they're able to even uh, go to court if necessary. So um, a big thanks to them. And you'll get a chance to hear from representatives um, of the Kentucky Association of Stealth Enforcers at our field tours as well. So the last group I'd like to mention is the Kentucky Sustainable Forestry Initiative. This is a group that is um, basically some of our larger wood industries in the state um, to put in money to support good forest conservation in the state. And they do a lot of different things as far as with that, um, their financial support. Um, but one of the things that they do do is help support the Kentucky Woodland Owner Short Course, and we appreciate their support in that regard. So what can you expect at the 2022 Woodland Owner Short Course? It's really got six main parts. Um, we're going to start it off with a kind of a, with overall the program is a hybrid. So we have some online stuff that leads into some field tours. So we start off on July 19th and um, that's a Tuesday evening and we're going to be talking about how to get started managing your woodlands and, and, and also part of that night we'll be talking about tree identification and then we move on to July 21st woodland health and 26, July 26th we're going to be talking about wildlife management. And then July 28th, we're going to be talking about woodland management and the change in climate. And those are all kind of lead ins to the two field tours. So if you register for all four webinars and a field tour, you'll pick one of the field tours. And we have two offered and they're in back to back weekends um, on Saturdays. This is August 6th is going to be at Penny Rile State Forest. This is a, um, we're going to, at this tour, there's going to be a little bit of driving. So we'll all meet at one location and then we'll have to drive individually out to a couple of different stops on Penny Rock State Forest. Um, we'll park at those locations and then we'll have some short walks um, from those um, parking locations to check out some of the management practices that are going on there at Penny Rock State Forest. That is um, managed and ran by the Kentucky Division of Forestry. So we appreciate them hosting us out there on August. Six. Then on August 13th, we're going to be at Berea College Forest, and this is more of a walking tour. So once you park your car and you join us at their Forestry Outreach Center, um, we'll be there for a little while. And then from there, we're going to be exploring the trails. And Berea has been working really hard on a wide variety of forest and woodland management practices. So we're going to be touring some of those practices, and um, but it will be more of a walking tour. So um, as you're thinking about which one you want to go on, I'll just let you know there'll be much less walking on August 6th and then August 13th you can expect to walk at least two miles maybe a little bit more. Um, it is on well-maintained trails um, but there is quite a bit of walking that day but that's how we're going to get around to see some of the great stuff that they're doing there in Berea. So I want to mention a little bit about each of these different sessions so you can kind of get an idea of what to expect at each one. So on managing your woodland, getting started or ramping, ramping it up on July 19th, um, I'll be talking about why and how we should manage our woodlands. And there's a, there's a wide variety of approaches, but I want to try to connect you all with the appropriate people at the right time. So um, and I will let you know that, you know, any more just had that benign neglect or hands-off approach to woodland management may not end in what you want it to be. Um, and Dr. Crocker will be talking about that a little bit later in forest health in the short course. But the problem is, is that there's a lot of threats that are facing our woodlands that we never had before. Um, so it's really critical that you get the right technical assistance at the right time. And it's also important to get the right financial assistance when you need it. So I'll be trying to nav help you navigate that process of getting started or increasing your woodland management um, on July 19th. Also on July 19th, Laurie Thomas, who does our Trees of the Week here on From the Woods Today, she's going to be talking about tree identification. And with more than 
than 100 trees native to Kentucky. There's a lot to learn. There really is. And all of these trees, you know, they grow in different places and based on the habitat, um, whether it's, you know, moisture or, or shade or climate or slope or soils. And they all have kind of areas where they can do better than maybe some other trees. So that's important to understand. And when you're thinking about from a commercial standpoint, you know, timber harvesting and timber sales, almost 50 of these species have some commercial timber value. So depending on where you're at, um, you may have a few more or a few less, but there are a lot of trees out there that do have commercial value. And it's because trees grow differently in different places and some are more apt to be successful in different locations, uh, being able to identify trees is really important when it comes to trying to manage your woodlands. Now, obviously our foresters and natural resource professionals in the state are quite knowledgeable of the trees here in Kentucky, but as a woodland owner, there's some real value for you to understand and know the trees that you have on your property. So Laurie's gonna be teaching you the characteristics that we use to identify trees in Kentucky. She's basically basically going to be teaching you how to fish um, instead of just giving you a fish, if you will. Um, let me use that metaphor there. Um, and so you'll be able to learn um, the process through tree identification where you can really identify any tree. So uh, make sure you join us on July 19th for that. And then we're going to shift on July 21st. Um, Dr. Ellen Crocker is going to be leading a session on woodland health. And, and we all know that healthier woodlands are more productive. And I mentioned before, there is a lot of threats um, to our woodlands. So Dr. Crocker will be helping you understand what you're looking at when you're looking at your woodlands and some of the signs you might want to be looking for regarding some threats to your woodlands, whether it be invasive plants, insects, or diseases. All of these um, can really devastate in woodlands and um, to varying extent. So uh, being able to recognize those and acting early on these threats is really important when it comes to woodland management. And there's a lot of support out there to help woodland owners do this type of work. So she's going to help you learn how to address these different woodland health threats. So uh, make sure you join us there on July 21st. And then the following week, we're going to have Dr. Matt Springer. He's our wildlife um, professor here, uh, extension professor, and he's going to be talking about wildlife management. He's going to be talking about some of the different requirements that wildlife have, um, depending on what species you're interested in. Um, it, not everybody may be interested in large games. Some may be interested in birds or smaller animals. So um, Dr. Springer will help us um, understand kind of some of those requirements that wildlife has. And a lot of people um, own woodlands for wildlife. They're interested in attracting wildlife to their property, and that really comes down to the habitat management, and um, Dr. Springer will be helping us understand how to get some wildlife habitat management on the ground. And ultimately, you can get more than one thing out of your woodlands, and that's an important thing to remember is that we can blend practices to yield multiple benefits. So um, one important thing that we try to stress is that you can integrate both wildlife and woodland management into one kind of woodland management plan and we encourage you to do so. And then on July 28th, um, Dr. Jacob Muller is going to be talking about woodland management in a changing climate. Um, I think we all recognize that climate is changing, uh, maybe rapid, more rapidly than we wish. Um, and that climate has a big impact on our woodlands, right? And not only on our woodlands, but how we go about trying to conserve and manage our woodlands. Um, so Dr. Muller will let us know some of the current, maybe anticipated effects that the climate change is going to have on Kentucky woodlands. And the idea is that, you know, with that knowledge, then we can implement adaption um, practices that can kind of help those woodlands be successful. There's also a, a growing um, voluntary carbon um, sequestration market, and we'll hear a little bit about some of that, what's going on in the carbon sequestration market as well um, from Dr. Muller. And then um, he's going to try to really identify these practices or actions that we can do to help our forests and woodlands navigate um, this changing climate. So that's an important session. So make sure you join us July 28th um, for Dr. Muller's session on woodland management and a changing climate. And then once we have all of those uh, that those webinars on uh, online available and we will record those so if those dates don't work for you you will have access to the recordings and what we're hopeful is that people will have viewed those recordings in advance of our field tours um, so as mentioned we have two field tours so when you register um, for the complete woodland owner short course it includes all four webinars and one option of which field tour you want so these field tours are going to run from approximately 9 30 to around 3 
three o'clock um, local time, give or take a few minutes. And, um, you know, so we're going to be on Central Time at Penny Rile, and we're going to be on Eastern Time at Berea. So uh, on August 6th, we're at Penny Rile State Forest. I mentioned it before, but this is a state forest managed by the Kentucky Division of Forestry. And that is the one that's going to have a little bit of driving where we'll have to drive to a couple of various stops. And then, then we'll get out at those stops and we'll have some instruction at those stops. And then on August 13th, we're going to be down at Berea College Forest. And, you know, this is the walking tour. So um, it's a it's a great tour, well-maintained trails, but just be prepared to do a bit of walking on that day. So um, hopefully those will work for you and your schedule. And, you know, if, we, if one date doesn't work for you, join us at the other one. Um, if maybe you don't want to do as much walking, then perhaps Penny Riles better for you. And if you, you're excited about doing some hiking around the trails at um, Berea, then that may be a better option for you but um, both will cover similar content they'll just be a little bit different because the woods and wildlife are a little bit different in both locations and some of the issues in western Kentucky are a bit different from what we're dealing with in central and eastern Kentucky um, so there'll be a little bit of tailoring to those specific locations um, to try to help woodland owners in both of those areas. So how do you get involved with this? So we have several registration options available and they all start at this website and you could probably just type in Kentucky Woodland on a short course and find us pretty quick. You can also find us off of our ukforestry.org homepage and you can find us there it's pretty quick too. So first we have an individual register registration. So if you're just one person, you're wanting to come, you want to do all the webinars and you want to pick one of the field tours, that's going to be $20. If you're a couple um, registered it's going to be $30 for all the webinars and one field tour. So um, that's an option. And if you can't make any of the field tours, then we have a webinars only option for $10. So hopefully there's something for everybody at this year's um, Kentucky Woodland Owner Short Course. And we hope to see you online and out in the woods.